We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. I see victory everywhere. I have been feeling very celebrational since from the beginning of today. It's like everything within me celebrating. And when it's happening, the tendency is for you to use your physical mind to be wondering, why am I feeling this way? Then when you do that, the devil wants to show you why you should not. So when I do it, I flow with it. Praise God. So you allow it. See, when the prophet said the servant to go check, he came back and said, I didn't see anything. The prophet had seen. He said, go back again. You see that? And he went back and he said, I saw something like a feast. He said, go and tell them to get ready. The rain has finished. <laughs> Glory to God. So within the time he was seen, everything within him was celebrating what he has seen. For the things that we see now, they are only temporary. For the things which we see not, I turn out. See, those things that are not physically visible, they might not be tangible. Those things are real. If I might be, if I can use the word realer, <laughs> more real <laughs> than the things that you see. There is a sound of abundance of rain. That though your beginning be small, look around, your, greater, your later end shall be greatly increased. In this same might, it's coming. It's already here actually. The coming means you will see it physically. Agree with it and pull it in. Something great is in store. Something better is happening. He that began the good work will complete it. You will not be put to shame. For every shame, there is double honor. You will continue to testify. I say you will continue to testify. You will continue to testify. In the name of Jesus, your testimonies must be bigger and more than your tests and your trials. In the name of Jesus, with your own eyes, they will see that this is the doing of the Lord. And you will continue to shout hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Can your hallelujah be louder? Shout it wherever you are. Shout hallelujah. Glory. Glory. While you are shouting the hallelujah, you need to be seeing the things that are happening. As far, the Lord just said, as far as your eyes can see, it is done already. So you can't shout hallelujah and you are seeing the other, the negative. You are seeing, I saw things falling off people. Every attachment of sickness 
falling off people. Anything that's intended, like you know, you know, like they put um, some things in, like in cars to monitor GPS. To, they put it under the car, something like we watch some of those detectives. They monitor somebody's movement. So any implantation or attachment of the devil that's intended to monitor your progress for evil, they fall off. They are detached now. They are detached now. They are detached now. The enemy is blinded. They can see you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Somebody shout hallelujah again. Something great is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. Something good. Something good. Something good. Ria Mama Kebo. You know, they are envious of you people, you and you particularly. And that, I use the old family background because that background cannot hold you bound anymore. As the old, I don't care how related they are to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we detach them from you even if they eat dinner and breakfast with you henceforth they will not be comfortable being around you anymore in the name by the fire of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus every ugly attachment they put on you to monitor your steps they are detached from you now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ they will not see you again. I said they will not see you again. 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 In the name of Jesus, they will not see you again. They will not see you again. They will not see you again. In the name of Jesus. They can see you in Jesus' name. So fear not, you will live well and not die. Every instrument that has been used to attach to you for sickness, the instruments are destroyed and are consumed by the fire of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every cell, tissue, organ, body, fluids, chemical components in your bodies function supernaturally. Functions, the fire of God is flowing through your blood now. Functions supernaturally. So any attachment, any infusion, anything that's put there in your sleep time, he dissolves out of your blood right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He dissolves out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. We give you praise, mighty God. Everyone lift your hand and just bless the name of the Lord. We glorify your name. 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 Every, everything intended to blindfold anybody under the sound of this voice right now. That you will not see the right thing, so you make wrong decisions, or you see wrong. We remove those blindfolds. We remove those blindfolds. We will remove the 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 blindfolds now, in the name of Jesus. So every hand of jealousy is cut off, in the name of Jesus. You will see clearly in Jesus' name. You will see clearly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. Lift your hand unto the Lord again and just bless him. Glory to God. Glory to God. The the church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Now, when we say the church, don't look like the group. You are the church. You are marching on. The gate of hell will not prevail against you in the name of Jesus. Marching on means you are moving forward. You're making progress. You're going higher. You're being lifted up. It's getting better and better. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Sing that song again. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gate of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. The 
church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Sing it again. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching. On. Keep marching. The church is marching on. We're going forward. The church is marching on. The gate of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Sing it again. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. The gate of hell shall not prevail. The church is marching on. Hallelujah. Statement came into my spirit again, like I made some years ago. I shared some story here. When they threatened the believer from his very home, when I'm in village, village, <laughs> back in Africa, they said, you, We know what you're doing here. We're, we're following our ancestors. You think he's going to church now. You see what's going to happen to him. And the Lord just picked up on the side. And we, the Lord said, Oh, I said, God help them, which means there is no other help. And when they're going against God's God's way, how can God help them? So it was over. One week was a statement. You people know this. You people remember this story. One week. <laughs> Everything I signed against that guy fell on all of them. So every arrow of wickedness signed against anybody here cannot touch you. It goes back to where it's sent from. Multiplied and increasing activity in the direction where it's sent from. In the name of Jesus. You will live well and not die. Every cell, tissue, organ, body, chemical components, you know, function supernaturally in the name of Jesus we give you praise mighty God glory to God amen praise God hallelujah hallelujah how many of you know this is the flow of the Holy Spirit uh, you always know by well that's what we depend on here glory to God hallelujah Glory to God. Glory to God. God help only God. Help anyone who has released any attack. Our assignment. Against anybody under the sound of this voice this morning. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. Oh, we bless you, mighty God. We bless your name, mighty God. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Tell me to look Mark 11. When all that you have 
Somebody hear me? When it seems like all that you have is nothing. <laughs> Verse 12. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar of having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And in the morning, there was no fruit. You see, in, in verse 13, the figs was not yet, so he found nothing. Everybody said nothing. And in the morning, in verse 20, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered, said unto them, Have faith in God. Jesus came to the tree, there was nothing. One thing is to, uh, for, for the fridge to be empty, the bank account to be empty, and you are full. Another thing is for it to be empty, and you have nothing. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, verse 1, God created the heavens, the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the world. See the two examples? Jesus in the New. God in the Old Testament, the beginning. The earth was nothing. <laughs> so when all that we have is nothing, where do we go from there? When everyone you depended upon failed. Everything you are looking to get something from is not bringing results. All that you plan, the aspirations and the dreams from a long time, you don't seem to see anything come. Or you had an appointment, you go there, they say, no, it's not there anymore. When what you depended on seems just to be sapping away, does that mean it's over? Somehow in the natural, it looks like it's over. I told you guys the story before I came into this country when. Um, I got to the embassy to come as a visitor. The way they, they the way they refused me, would have thought like, you shouldn't be in this place. <laughs> you shouldn't come here at all. <laughs> refused me with all, and I went anyway. The people were trying to help. Some guy who walks, who's really a, a top guy there from here, and all that. Said, no, no problem. His case is the new. His family's there, and all that. That's what they said. So he. He travels. Guys, when he comes back, we have dinner. My friend who was there, who his kind of job to take some international airlines, so they had met with these kind of people and all that. And he said, he said, that's good human connection. The network was fine. But the moment he arrived, before the dinner, he has received a, an assignment out of the country, transferred completely. You see, even when man does not intend to fail, even when man does not intend to lie. When I say lie, it's to fail. Because God says in his word, Numbers 23, 99, God is not a man that he should what? Lie. See, man can tell you, I'll be there at 4. But 3.30 something comes up, he can't make it at 4. Because man is, man's help for you depends on other people around him. But God is self-sufficient and all-sufficient. So his help comes from within him. He does not need any external help. To be able to help us. So this man tra transferred the help field at the last minute. But was it over? So by the first time I remember now leaving there, the embassy said, mm, they refused me as a visa. I'm going to come here as an immigrant. <laughs> so I will come in a bit more dignity. I'll just come here and I really take my way. And that's what really happened. 
today, part of the thing I'm saying is, what is your response? So when I said it, there was no natural evidence. There was no natural thing to think for me to think that way. It was so far. But what am I saying from? I'm saying based on the fact. First of all, I claim that what God has joined together, let no embassy or nation put us under. My family was here. <laughs> Praise God. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So I held on to some, some, the scripture. You see, when we say it now, it might look like, oh, David said, the grave will not praise you, and I will praise you. Put two and two together. He meant, that meant he won't go to the grave because <laughs> he will praise the Lord. Smart man. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that's it. Take the scripture like it is. Wake up. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And there's no rejoicing coming. Nothing showing rejoicing. Then choose the rejoicing. Enforce it. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when all that we have seemed to be nothing... It's all over the Bible. You can see God see what why God at the beginning gave us this path, showing us his ways of faith, tenacity, and restoration. He was void, he spoke. Jesus said, This is not a big deal. The fruit tree dried up. You can do something. You have authority and power to change, reorder the things that are around you. But how do you do that from the place of confusion? To this stage. See, we are involved in it. There are so many things that happen that confuse people. We have to come to the place of rising from or going from the confusion, the distress, the pain, the anxiety, the things that perplex us. When there seems to be no hope at all, to the place of strategizing, we have to be able to be able to plan. Walk with God. When I talk today, you will see that in most cases we actually have planned before we think. <laughs> with God. <laughs> we react based on the thing that comes. You get on the job, they just tell you, I don't like the way they're doing it. I'm getting a new job. I'm getting a new job. <laughs> so you move from that job, quit, and get into another job. Or, or your mind is thinking another job. Immediately. You get? So how have we strategized with God to deal with that situation? Like I said last time, change is not just movement. So movement is just placing yourself from one place to the other. But change for a Christian is change according to what God wants. It's not the change of location which can be in it, but moving with God. We see places where there was nothing. Water to wine in John chapter 2. There was no wine. It was late. The alternative will have been go around around look for everywhere. Maybe they will find a little. Maybe <laughs> they were late. But Mary went to the source. When we... See, that's why the scripture says, when I'm overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In the midst of the confusion, the grace to reach the source is what we need. Everything wants us to respond immediately as it comes. Or even if you started responding or you're used to doing that, it's not late. This is not like, oh my God, this is not, how can we do it? This is how I lived. No. One day can change your whole 50 years back, 20, 30 years, 10 years, 5 years. One day with God. The hall of fish, there was nothing. When Peter and Luke chapter 5. They really had nothing. 
zero fish. There was like they failed. It's finished. You will see the positioning. Peter, there was no hall that would have come if he was not with Jesus. I don't care how he, he was finished. They were washing their and they left. Now, notice that when we say that, I say, well, hey, just went to Jesus. Do, do you go, go now? You can go to. Mm -mm. All that people were washing their nets. But Peter. So it wasn't the common place. All of them would have sat down under his teaching. Now when he said, somebody said, well, it was because he told him. He could have said no to, can't you see, we didn't catch any if he tell me to bring boat. Why? I should go home. I'm tired. I'm confused. Everything is bad. But Peter gave the boat. May God's grace be available for us to yield to him. Even when, we are, even when things are so down. Because he's still the source. He's the restorer. There's nobody that can change whatever, whatever we are except him. The world might not make us see that. So Peter yielded to his request. Peter went and sat down. Gave the boat and that made him sit under the teaching. Everything else was as a result of him being there. The Lord reached him because he said, because he gave his boat. He responded and agreed with the Lord because he heard the word. See? See, we have toiled all night. The reason for failure is still there. We cannot do anything. But at thy word. Because I've heard all this one you've been saying. And that's why they say, how come this man spoke with so much authority? That's Jesus. How would they know he spoke with authority if they didn't hear him? You know, like I tell some people on Facebook, say, oh, great man of God. Say, have you ever listened to any of our services? Have you ever been in? They say, no, how do you know he's a great man of God? <laughs> that makes me laugh. As that's just routine. That's not the way they were dealing with Jesus. Many people were at the place where the woman touched him. They were all around him. She was actually the one who had, didn't have access to him. She had to move in between people to touch the hem of his garment. The others were all over him. Many people were following Jesus when blind Bartimaeus called out. They were just going, ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Seeing the activity on the phone. But somebody wanted something else. All we need is a touch from Jesus. The supernatural touch that will change anything. Bartimaeus shouted, I need you. Have mercy on me. The other said, we just need to see what you are doing. Not to be part of what you're doing. We are not spectators. We are participants. We participate. Like I always say here, this is not Broadway. Broadway is great. Broadway, you sit down and you watch. But here, we're all acting. We're all involved in it, actually. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so you see the man, all of them. Baby. Paul, in Acts 27. All hope that we should be saved. It's gone. See, wherever this applies to you, when you have put in everything, even if it's your, not your fault, somebody else's fault, or they, they moved you in that direction, it's still not past. Even if it was your own decision that made you begin to sink like Peter, it is not late. Peter still cried out. And Jesus reached him. See, for people, everything was gone, finished. All hope is gone. He did not give up. He still had to press towards the Lord. So he abstained to go to God. And the angel appeared unto him. You will appear before Caesar. Praise God. Say so it's not over. Nothing can terminate the mandate of God. That's the point. But in the midst of the system of the things going on in the world now, sometimes it's rough to remember the mandate of God. Hmm. Hmm. Pain somewhere. You hear one story about a child. There's no food in the house. The job is shaky. What do you do? You don't. It's not, before when the job starts, does somehow you say, well, the system is working fine. The country does not even know what tomorrow is going to be like. Because something from beyond the country is influencing what's going on in the country. The war somewhere is affecting even gas prices. Hello? 
So you're going to now wake up and say, well, I don't have any problem. This country is doing great. But the country too is relying on certain things. They're not absolute. It's not an island. Are you getting what I'm saying? So anything shaking in the world, the pandemic COVID started from one place. Are you getting it? So now it gets all over the world. So one nation affecting the other nation. So where then will we get help from? I will look onto the hills. I will look onto America. I will look onto London. I will look onto Germany, Russia. I will look onto England, anywhere. No. From where cometh my help? I'm not looking at this one. My help comes from where? From the Lord. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But if my hope is in those things, how can I think right? So that in the midst of the perplexity, I can still be going forward. Something else is propelling me. There's every reason to be dysfunctional at this time. There's every reason to think no, not, nothing good can come out. Everybody will understand. <laughs> so we can hide it under that. But it's not so for us believers. In everything is an opportunity for God to get glory. Because the, way, the more the world ceases to be up, absolute, or ceases to be our source, the more God comes on the scene. Everything is has failed, and I'm here right now, says the Lord. Yeah, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So there might be opportunities for you to, or times for you to think that I will leave. Because the thing that so much men have left, <laughs> the system has left, the government might not even be able to make it, things around might not work well. But it says, I it will not leave you. You see, even suckling mother will not, uh, even when they abandon the baby, say, I will not leave you. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we see that David as Ziglag, first summer 30, that's the same thing that happened. Everything seemed to have. David at Ziglag when the Amalekites came in you know when I turned to it and I remember when I ministered in Pakistan I said read it you know because <laughs> so I almost was waiting <laughs> praise God <laughs> and I remembered oh no, no this one is different I have to read <laughs> praise God and verse, verse, we'll start from verse 1 and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. Finished everything. And had taken the women captives that were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam and Jezreel, Jezreelites. Oh, Jezreelites. Je oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. And Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. Why? For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Glory to God. So we can be in a place where we say when there's nothing. So when we say there's nothing, not just that you don't have. When all hopes seem to be gone, or where you think you're looking for to get things seem to be blocked, or in some cases you see that like, there's no way here, or it's too late here, or how can we do anything? Nothing's just there's nothing that can come. So there can be disappointment. You can be disorganized, confused, like everything seems to be dead without direction, like the earth, null and void. And that, that, that don't begin to feel that because your things have come at you, you are not a good Christian. Jesus was hungry. He went to the tree. There was no fruit. I don't know. Maybe you were better than Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. 
The Lord saw the earth null and void. God. He saw null and void. So when you see or encounter a situation that is null and void, it has not separated you from God. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. So no matter the confusion, no matter the situation where we are in, from confusion to the next level, it's either we allow what we encounter to control us. If we allow it to control us, or we begin to respond to the situations the way we should. Jesus did not allow the disappointment to control him, rule him, or define him. See? He can define. That's why I say he doesn't make you feel like I'm not good enough. You will not allow that to order your life. So begin to, so the failures begin to determine how you go from that point. Praise God. So we will not allow that to happen. So even if it seemed over, there's no fruit, there's no job, no money. There's no support or help of man. There's no health. No education. No hope. No required resources for the business. Sometimes there's no connection enough, you know, for the deal. Human connection, I mean, for the deal. You don't know enough people to be able to help you. Or you don't even know anybody at all. Do you know it doesn't change anything? It doesn't change. I've seen it. People have heard things I've shared here when I first came into this country. It doesn't, you don't have to know anything. Now, I'm not saying when you know, you should forget it. <laughs> but if you don't know, it's, it doesn't mean it's over. God can direct you to pick up the phone and make a call that will open up a whole chain of things. You'll be amazed. Anything can happen if you depend on the Lord. I have seen it. I've shared different instances here. You step into a place you don't know anyone. Somebody will stand out. We actually spoke it in this season. I don't know if you remember that. That you step into places, people you don't. People have shared that. People you don't know. People who are dead, the initial small fries. I'm not knowing they are small, but <laughs> might tell you no. Mm. They look at you. Maybe the receptionist or the secretary you first of all meet might resist you. The inner boss, the CEO will come up, stand up, and work for you. Amen. Right in their presence. I say, people you don't even know. People who don't know you will save you, will help you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So stop thinking. The first thing you think is, who do I know? I know God. See, Or if he needs for you to know people, he will raise them up. He will set you up, divinely position you for those people and divinely position those people for you. Don't be afraid. No matter how large the field is, you know, sometimes when it's too large, you're wondering, hmm, how can I enter this place? Miss my one. The larger it is, which means there's more room for you. <laughs> the bigger the company, the bigger they are all over the world, there's more room for you. <laughs> if it was small, maybe there's no room. So it's good for you. Anyhow they see it, there's room for you. I remember the CEO of that um, um, real estate company that I read in the book a while ago. They said he went for an interview in the same place four times. They refused him. Then finally when they took him, he grew in that company to become the CEO. And he, made, he became their best CEO they ever had. Somebody who was rejected four times. <laughs> who says there is no God? <laughs> Glory to God. See, when he's the one that positions you, he will make you shine. So the shining does not mean the shining just comes because God put me here. So I just shine every day if there's a problem. No, it's not God. No. The shining means you know that God put you. That's why I said the thoughts that I have towards you are of good. So you know that. And not of evil. To bring you unexpected. And so when evil wants to come up in between, you know God who began this good work is able to take me to the end. So you stay on so you can see the overcoming power of God. Those that endure to the end, they are what? The overcomers. In everything for a Christian, 
the deal is staying to the end. Everything that has been preached, everything shared in the Bible is staying to the end. That's it. Not to give up halfway. Glory to God. So no matter what is there, don't submit to any covenant that will contradict the will of God. Anything other than God in order to belong to the progressive. People who, we, who are making progress. People who are growing or doing well. Like I said, I said we're still going to bring that message on success. That's been pretty much very a lot. The definition of success in the world. The world defines success by the things they see. Success is actually the will of God. I said it last time. Saul, in the eye of the world, was successful when he went to that war. He was. Because he defeated the enemy. He brought all the goods back, the spoils. But was he successful? No, he failed. He lost his kingdom. Why? Because he disobeyed God. So while the world would have been seeing him as a success, he had actually failed. From that point, he brought back the king. From that point, he failed. <laughs> but you will not fail. I said we 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 will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hmm. And there's Sister Victory now. That Victory Duffer. You will not fail, all right? You will not fail. Remember that. As I just said it, the Lord just took me to it. You will not fail. I know you're signing on, on Zoom, but you will not fail. Don't be afraid. All right? Now, some of you wonder this thing that they say. We have had countless testimony, you know. You know, the few other people. They are not even here. Far back in the, in the service, I would just say the exact things. Of us people are going to the exact thing. So when God says in between the message, just switches to something else, you know that's coming strongly prophetic. But the, 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 the deal is that the power to actualize this is released as that word comes. So when you receive at that point, you see it happening. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So what do we do? What look at look look at the examples. Look at the Lord. Look at David. The Lord, the Bible said, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord brooded. He hovered over the waters, over the earth, brooding over it. So the brooding is part of like meditating, thinking on it. So he did not, God, why did God put it there? God, the Lord just said it was not avoid and God spoke. Why was it in the scripture? In verse, Genesis in verse 2. It says, and the earth, chapter 1, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then God said, He moved upon it. Why was it put there? So God was not reacting by, void, hey, let's go. So, like a crisis, <laughs> responding to the crisis with all our strength. Respond to the attacks of man with our strength. We can make mistakes. So that can be and responding to anxiety or fear or anger. So you, they did that. With, really? Okay. You don't think. Just jump out. Enter your car. Blah. So there's problems. Even road rage on the streets, on the roads. That's the kind of response. Somebody did this and it draws after him, brings out something, strikes the person or shoots or whatever. Because it's reacting. You know. Simple cross my front. We send somebody to, to, to jail for 10 years for nothing. <laughs> That's operating under the curse. But we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. So how do we move from confusion and perplexity and distress to strategizing? Because once we can strategize with God, the victory is guaranteed. If God says go left, he knows at the end of that left there's something for you. Or in between, or way on your pathway, on your way in that left, there's something for you. God says, I will not do anything except I show myself. The Holy Spirit will come, will tell us things to come. So we as believers, we're not afraid. So when things come up strong, there seem to be no way things are hard. How do we get into this place? How do we get this job? How do we get this business? How do we do this? We're not confused. Even if it's hard, we stay with God then we can get the next level. There cannot be strategizing in confusion. We hear direction, 
in the place of peace. Are you getting it? See, when you are not at peace, you don't know what's going on. We keep running. Elijah ran from Jezebel, who just called for fire. And after then, every other statement was coming from another side. Take me, oh, I'm the only one here. <laughs> yeah, everything is just on the other side. Because it was still in that state of fear, anxiety, and probably depression. So there's nothing that will flow that will flow in the way of God in that direction at all. So how can you get victory? And God brooded, stayed over the sons, then responded from that in the multitude of counsel of this wisdom, direction. I see, we cannot do it based on how we did. I will share some of the workers. I think I'll just bring it. A little bit here, so you understand. It's just line up for this, this today. We cannot respond to the distress of the world in our strength. Because we have no answer for anything. Jehoshaphat said, Oh God, is you we rely on our eyes on you, for we have no might against these people. Yes! That's it. When I come to God, I don't come to God like, you know, last night I dealt with them like this. Last week I did. No, no, no. I come to God like, look at me. I'm a little baby before you. I ain't got no answer to this thing. I don't know what to do. I have no, no clue. Help me. Then you're open to the wisdom of God. If you are so reliant on I prayed three hours after I prayed, oh, I don't know why this is not happening. I thought I, I quoted the scripture. I meditated. I did. You are so strong. Then you don't need God. That's why you didn't hear from him. You blocked all avenues. <laughs> Praise God. Just come like a little child. So except you come like to me like this little children. Come like a little child, like you don't know nothing. Check the scriptures. That's the way it is. David in 1 Samuel 30, we just read. The Bible says he was greatly distressed in verse 6. 1 Samuel 30. David was losing authority, and power, his kingship. The people were refusing him. If there was an election there, no one would vote for him. <laughs> not even one person. Even he himself would not vote for himself. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so there was nothing. But David not said, my God, I went to fight war. You know, I've been a great man. I dealt with Goliath. I dealt with those lions and the bear. You know, I, I, I should be able, this is a small thing. I, I don't know why this will happen. When we went to war, we followed your leading. How come this is happening to us? <laughs> David didn't think of that. Too. A man after God's heart, everything pushes him towards God. <laughs> he, when he makes mistakes, he goes to God. When he, whatever, he, everything pushes David towards God. That's the way it should be for every believer. No excuses. Don't let it linger on. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. God knows where we are. You know, we're sharing that last was on Sunday. He knows. Was it Wednesday we were sharing? Praise God. You know what it is like preaching every day for? I mean, it's every week. So you, so you don't know where you... That one came about. But he knows where we are. He knows the things that we are going through. Why do we act like God doesn't know? You know, I did this. I don't understand why God says forgive. He said, well, God, you look at what they did. He knows. He saw it. <laughs> he saw it. <laughs> so before he told you forgive, he saw it. If he tells you to forgive, he knows you can do it. You remember that lady, the dentist who came, I just remember that story. Who said, God spoke in the service. Go and do what you have to do and all that. And she danced at the altar with her husband. Danced for about 30 minutes after the service. Then they went home. She came back with it. Pastor, you know that's for me. I said, yeah, God spoke to you. I said, yeah. So that's, he said, you know, I, I, I'm a dentist from the, uh, Nigeria. And she said, when you come here, you go to school for three years. And that's too much. Medicals, the doctors just write the exams. But they have to go to school two years or three years. So I, don't, I don't know how it's going to be. He said, but God spoke it. I, he said, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, then you received it. Yeah, I received it. He said, but God. He said, Pastor, you know. And that time, you know, they still started having children. God gave them breakthrough fruit of the womb. You know, and they remember, you know, their testimony. And they started having children. So now, even when 
there were no children. It was it was three years was much for her. Now with children coming, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I said, well, if God spoke it, don't you think God's grace is in this, what He has spoken? He said, yes. So fine. Good. That's how she went. She did it. She said sometimes five a.m. I'm studying. He said, but tests those tests were sent all time to people. He said sometimes she has no time, but she opens at the right time. Which like, oh God, I'm so tired. I don't want to do this. And she opens. So she says, oh my, thank God. And she received. And she strengthened. And she continued. She did the exam. Finished the school. Did the exam. Got the license and everything. The grace of God is in whatever He tells you to do. If he says forgive, and you say, do you know what they did to me? He knows. And he knows you can't forgive them. He will not tell you to do what you cannot do. Because he's not a liar. Oh, hallelujah. Are you getting it now? <laughs> he's not a man that he should what? Lie. So if he tells you to do what you cannot do, that means he has lied. Because when he tells you, he's telling you you can do it. And God cannot lie. Say, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. Now somebody catching something. Now David encouraged himself. The Bible says, but. When it comes to David, there's a lot of this but. Many are those that said there's no help for me in God. Psalm 3 says, verse 2. Verse 1 says, many things are all over him. Verse 2. People say there's no help for him in God. That means like it's over. It's, if people are looking at it, it's finished. No help for him in God. That is... He said that they say God cannot help him, like the man in Second King said, if God were to open the windows of heaven, he cannot take care of this. He said that they say God cannot help him, or God has turned his back on him. Both ways is finished for him. <laughs> Praise God. But David didn't stop there. He said, But thou, O Lord, but, 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 but. When there is a but, means there's something else higher than what the enemy is telling me. Say there is a but for me. It is the word of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, say, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. Not only is God shielding you from the onslaught of wickedness, it's already made a way for something to overshadow the onslaught of wickedness. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, shielding me from what you are doing now my glory now and the lift out of my head from the shame somebody say hallelujah glory to god but david encouraged himself in the lord is god his god he encouraged himself. he went to his god david went to his God. Do you have God? You know, I can't answer for you. I can't say now, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Or I tell you, you believe in your heart. You believe for yourself. Are you a child of God? Is God your God? Can you call him your God? Your Abba Father. Him that you relate with on a daily basis from morning, afternoon, night, around the clock, 24 on 7. Is he your God? Because if he's your God, you can come boldly to him anytime, anywhere, in the morning, at night, in the afternoon, or anywhere you are. You're in the bathroom, in the toilet, you're cooking, you're on the bus, on the train, on the ferry, on the air, everywhere you are. Is God your God? Hallelujah. God is my God. He encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Amen. And encouragement there. That's what I'm coming to now. Encouragement means David went to God. Say, God, I know you can help me. See? I know God can help me. That's encouragement. To strengthen yourself means I draw strength. To know what to do. So coming to God's presence. What do you do from confusion? How do you go to that level of strategizing? I go to him. David went to the Lord. Right there where everybody was. He didn't have to run away from the people. Right there. Talking to his God. He encouraged himself. I know God can strengthen me. With a lion and a bear. With Goliath. Went to war. Just came back. I know this God has been good to me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
and forget not all his benefits. You hear me? Forgive all our iniquities and he led us of all our diseases. He saved our life from destruction. Now, if you know, he renews my Satisfy my mouth with good things so my youth is renewed. Praise God. Goodies. So if I know this God, then I can encourage myself. Say the joy of the Lord, who God is and who he is to me, strengthens me. Whoever is coming to God, Hebrews eleven six 6 says, must believe that he is and is a rewarder, my rewarder. He is the healer. He is my healer. So in the face of that perplexing sickness, I know that God is the healer. He is my healer. He's working for me now. So I'm strengthened to now rise up and know what God will want to say. When you're down, I have seen it. I've been through it. When the enemy says you can't move, the doctor says it's all over, and you look in one. How can you have confidence to talk to God in such time when everything else dictates that it's over? Within that time, we say, Lord, and the Lord tells you things. Someone thinks that it tells, that's the strategizing. We sound outrageous. <laughs> Nobody else will understand or see it. When they say you can't move, you find yourself moving. He says, watch, you will do this, you will do that, this will happen, and you're walking with God, you're seeing it from day to day. Why? Because... You're strategizing with God. So the response from the diagnosis of man or the system or the times will dictate that you get afraid. You cry. And you get, I mean, there's nothing wrong you cry, but don't stay in the crying. Rise from it. You cry. And it's done. I can't do anything. Then you begin to respond to people, respond to issues, respond to the things coming from that point. And that doesn't bring breakthrough. It brings fear and failure. And God has not ordained for us to fail. Say, I will not fail. I am not a failure. I make succeeding success in the name of Jesus. So David encouraged himself in the Lord. So he was in that place where he can now hear God say, what, he knows what to do. He called the priest, first of all. Find out from God. What do we do? <laughs> We're ready. Glory to God. Hey, he's not in the place of fear now. So it's clear that what he hears will be what God says. Because in the place of confusion, you're likely to hear the enemy. Not just, God is speaking all the time. But the, what the enemy says can crowd or cloud whatever God is saying. So when you come to that place of peace, then you're, you'll be clear that you're hearing God. Then you move with confidence. Praise God. The Lord said, pursue the pursued. He tells Peter, launch out. Peter launched out. Mary could be confident to say, whatever he tells you to do, do it. I know. Are you getting it? I know. <laughs> I'm not speaking from fear. I know. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. And Mary did. And the people did. Jesus said, put water in the phone. Follow my leading. You can only follow when you are clear that he's the one saying it. You can only be clear when there is no confusion. You can only be free of confusion when you have surrendered. I've said surrendered once. You are surrendering to him. Because why you surrender to him, the enemy will be barraging with the reasons why you should be confused. But you keep staying with him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you notice, when we're in him, the strategy, we don't go blindly. David did not just pursue. We got leading. They were following. They pursued. They met an Egyptian. They talked to him. And he led them. He told them where to go and all that. So there was, it's not a blind thing. They just say, pursue, go. You see, when you are strategizing with God, you are continuously in tune with him. So it's not like I heard yesterday, let's just go anything he says. So the, the way we did it yesterday, we did it again today. No, you are depending on him completely. Praise God. So there is no information of man that will suddenly bring fear. You, God says, do the business, you begin to go. And suddenly he says, hey, they hear everybody is failing, you know, and you just stop. No, God forbid. In First Chronicles or Second Chronicles chapter 1. Solomon, 
built in verses, you see from verses 2 down, Solomon spoke to the people, then they started real, getting things for the altar, for the ark. And Solomon went off thither to the brazen altar before the Lord. See, in verse 6, he had all the promises. He heard his father pray to God, and God answers his father. So he, he had all the wealth that the father brought forth. And the, the kingdom was before him. Solomon did not forget God. He started dealing with the altar, then went to God. He wasn't sufficient. Somebody says, well, when God asked him, what do you want? Solomon said, the wisdom to lead your people. It wasn't then he started. It was already within him to depend on the Lord. So when the Lord asked him, it wasn't something he would think of too far. Hmm, this is, <laughs> this, is <what> <laughs> this is what I want. So he went to God with such in his heart. So when God asked him, now what would you want me to do for you? Solomon voiced it. So the kingdom was, of course, the thought of it was, could be overwhelming. Father was an experienced warrior. Solomon was his child in the kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. But Solomon depended on the Lord. And the Lord gave him this, the strategy and the empowerment to work with the strategy to lead the people. So his decisions will not be like man would decide. It can look like child play. Like when they brought to say, this is my child. The second woman said, this is my child. Solomon said, split the child now. Now who would have thought of that? As I... <laughs> no, you get, it looks like child's play. What is he talking about? But that was wisdom. If he's really your child, you want them to split that child. Hello. <laughs> Even if somebody has took the child away, it's okay. But don't touch my child. It's the wisdom of God. So when he's got the strategy, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But he reveals them by his spirit. So the deal is that be, what God is saying now is that some of the steps he might want us to take might not look like what the come everybody wants. <laughs> Praise God. But stay with him. Praise God. Glory to God. Stay with him. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. Glory to God. So they found direction. David, where to go? And they get info on how to get about it. That's what God provides. The direction, the info, the leading, the strategy of God. The steps to follow to whatever God has for us. And when we know what God wants... We will get to our destination. The victory is guaranteed. Let's rise on our feet. Glory to God. We'll continue next time. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. From confusion to strategizing. Glory to God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. When all that you have is nothing, when there's confusion, don't give up. The time to, this is the time to excel. The time to go higher than you have ever been. It's an opportunity. It's not over. I remember the Lord told us, I said, at the beginning of the fight, I said, you will eat the good of the land. Can you imagine telling you, when, <laughs> when everybody's mad, like, oh my God, what's happening to the world? Getting, things are folding up. Things are finishing. Right in the middle, the Lord said, you will eat the good of the land. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, when God says that, you just hold on to it. And I came over and announced it to my people. God said, we are eating the good of the line this time. <laughs> Praise God. So get ready. So you will do things that you have not done before in the time when there was no problem. Hey, we'll start up. I don't postpone the things that you believe God for. Thinking because there are issues, maybe later I will do it. No. You're not running in your strength. You say, we stay with God. And then the strategy to it comes in. You will get there. There's greater confidence when God is giving the strategy. We're not running. We're not anxious. We do it the way of the Lord. Glory to God. We're not afraid of anything that comes. 
Hallelujah. There is no blockade. No evil blockade. There's nothing that can damn our water flowing to us. In the name of Jesus. We are like trees planted by the rivers of water all the time. There will be no dryness. The heat of the system will not dry up anything that concerns us. In the name of Jesus. We are well watered gardens. In the name of Jesus. Wherever we are. Whoever we come in contact with. In wherever we are. Whoever we associate with. The fire and the glory of God in us. Will cause us to shine. Stronger than any force of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We oh, praise you, mighty God. Just wave your hand unto the Lord. Lift your hand unto them. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, majesty. We glorify your name. 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 Blessed be your holy name, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name, mighty God. It is in you we live, we move, and have our being, our total being. You are everything to us. We thank you, mighty God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, sometimes confusion runs in families. Many of you know that. When it comes to my spirit, as I was saying, I remember the last time we were ministering uh, to in, so a couple of last month or so in Pakistan, and, and we talked about the anger. We said, This is this, there's some people, there's a family, and one of the ladies testified that yes, a mom and stuff like that, it could be in family. So, some of the things that, that happen uh, could be in uh, families. So, which means it, it, you find it in mother and grandmother, great grandmother, son, whatever it comes like that. So, some of those things are things that are assignments to cripple. So, it goes from generation to generation, which means it is the connection to every curse of not moving forward. So, if anxiety is there, which means there's likely, there's less likelihood to do the things of to do it like God wants because anxiety means you all the time move to, to answer the thing by flesh. It might look like you're working hard. So, well, I didn't get to the uh, proverbs I wanted to mention. <laughs> glory to God, amen. Glory to God, but you know, we'll get to that sometime. I was trying to work, I just mentioned briefly, but I will do the teaching on that later. I said, See, one thing is anxiety when it costs us from God. We might seem to be doing the right thing. See, when we're, the wrong thing does not mean we are doing like something sin, so to speak, that it's obvious. You can be doing things that seemingly look right, but because they are variant to what God wants, is wrong. Saul, in, in, on the outside, if you, if people who didn't know that God told him, take off the king, don't kill everybody, don't bring anybody back, will not have, will have thought that he did the right, you know that? He didn't really do anything externally wrong. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So not all good is the perfect. Not all thing that looks good is the perfect will of God. It's everything good and accept the perfect will of God, which only comes as the mind is aligned to God. Renew your mind. So you might, you might know what is that good and perfect and acceptable. So when we say anxiety, don't make it like, oh, I did. Those times we you could be anxious because you're afraid you have this job. And suddenly your mind goes, my God, what if they take this? And you run quickly, get another one. And it takes your time so that it blocks you from actually being available for the thing that God wanted to do to take you to the next level. But that will not be your portion in Jesus name. anybody here. I hear what I'm saying? So, so in your doing that second job, you might actually be working hard to people. <laughs> But that might not be God. Sometimes what God says today, be doing something for tomorrow. So if you're looking at it from the immediate standpoint, then you make your decisions. Better. But if we do this and this and, and you analyze it, and maybe your voice is small, too, so oh, you can't say more. Everybody around you says, no, 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 you know when we do this. And so, so the decision that will bless you in years to come, you just stop. So when we're talking about this from confusion to strategizing, it's really, so you get to understand that even when you are, what you're doing seems to be 
holy in quote <laughs> you know righteous in quote is something that does not that's not obviously wrong i see but if it is conflicting with the direction of god um it's wrong god is not looking for you to obey him so that you can be yes he's god he's god with or without us are you hearing me he's, he's, nothing can change him but everything he tells us to do is to help us get to the next level actualize his purpose for our lives the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord eyes have not seen ears have not seen heard you see he has not entered the heart of man the things he has prepared so then he said we that he might freely the things it was only by the spirit we can connect with the things that have been freely given unto us how can we actualize those free gifts if we're not aligning with him somebody said i have to be spiritual no i'm telling that's what we've been teaching here everyday lifestyle walking with god hmm? it's not like oh, I, let me remember no as you are aligning with him, your every move and flow just connects with God. Everything you do is like God who wants it. You just, you just, it becomes, you are one with God. That's the way it's supposed to be. Anyhow, you are a son, you are the, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Is it once in a while? It's around the clock. You are a son of God, a child of God, around the clock. So that's who we are. So we're supposed to be flowing with him. So your decisions just come. When your heart wants to do what God wants, it's easy. By the time God says, forget it, forgive. And you quickly say, oh Lord, I'm sorry, help me to forgive. I forgive them. And you are flowing with God. It's not just because you say, God, what do I do? What do I need? No. When you flow with God in such ways, in all ordinary things, so to speak, every other thing begins to line up the same way. You find yourself, you're driving the Lord, say, go left. You just quickly, you know, you just go left. Wake up this one. You take these steps. And he comes back to tell you, don't, son, do it this way. So I say, and you quickly come and say, yes, Lord, thank you. And you do it. You can pass by somebody and something they did offends you and you are not happy about it. And if you're walking with God, you walk away. Two minutes, you come back, you're a changed person. <laughs> Different. Because you walk flowing with God. That's the way it works with us. It's, he he, he put repositions us so nothing can terminate our breakthroughs. See, so if I continue that offense, I'm going away from him. So I'm going to leave my prayer somewhere. He says, you're praying, and you have all the case anyone. Go and settle it first and come back and continue with the prayer. But see, little, little things. We just assume it's one of those things. But it is hanging something somewhere. See, so every day living, I'm just saying, Lord, oh yeah, he says, I go by, he says, just take care of it. You say, mm -mm, God understand. Okay, I'll tomorrow when I see her, mm -mm. it's only, you're yeah, just saying, no, God, first of all, you rise, Lord, I'm sorry. I forgive him. I forgive him. Oh, that's not me. I just go back now. Your stance has changed. You might not even know that if you don't change your stance, the person could have recognized it, that you're offended. And you have grieved the person, you have made the person in a different mood. The person goes out because it's not flowing with God now, because something is bothering them. They miss certain breakthroughs that will have come their pathway. You see the chain reaction. So you cannot cause one person to miss God by one little thing that you can adjust. Just one little thing. <laughs> Praise God. Hear the wisdom of God. <laughs> Glory to God. That situation on your job, if you are listening to this message, you find the chain that you find within this week. So some of the reactions that have come from people is because of how you are reacting to situations that probably they are not even anything. Hear the voice of God. Glory to God. Wonderful Jesus. We praise you, mighty God. We bless your holy name. Glory to God. 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 We praise you, mighty God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, wonderful Jesus. So we're going to take authority over that spirit of confusion. We're going to start with that conversation. Sometimes it can be a cause jumping from place to place. You, you know, one thing can happen between two people. One takes it out. We're going to go, oh, really? Oh, you? You're all over the place for nothing. So we can arrest that now. Amen. Place your right hand on your forehead. Every spirit of confusion, when I, when, we, when I declare that to receive it and begin to pray, and where you pray in the Holy Ghost, oh, yeah, you want to pray. As a spirit of confusion, we take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Every curse of confusion, 
It's flowing from generation to generation. We break that cycle. We destroy your power. Christ has redeemed every one of us from the curse of the law. In the name of Jesus. Confusion, we command you to lose your hold right now. In the name of Jesus. People of God, we see clearly. We hear clearly. In Jesus' name, begin to pray right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lema ma 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 sanderem bro loko bobo bo sanderem bro ne makaba. Rila ma 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 sanderem bro loko bobo bo sanderem. Lika bobo sonderem bro leke baba ba soka bro ne makari bro na ma. Rima ma confusion you go 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 in the name of Jesus keep a couple confusion you go in the name of Jesus captain ne maka. Lema kadi ana ma the curse is destroyed. Nikamo shanter in Brana, the curse is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rikabo Shimbra Nimaka. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, I receive peace for me and all that concern me. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for peace. Thank you for peace. Peace that pass all understanding. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Let's, let's bless the Lord with our offerings and our sins. We're still continuing that same attitude. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You will know what to do. Now you will know what to do. You will know what to do. You will know how to answer. You will know what to say. You will not be confused, not be overwhelmed. In the name of Jesus, people will not set traps for you anymore with words or with things that you will say things that will be wrong or you will do things that will be wrong. They will not set you up again on your job because your reactions have been giving them that power, but now it has stopped. They will not say when they set you up there, hey, whoever sets you up falls into the trap of whatever they set up. You will not fall as a victim of any trap of wickedness. The snare is broken and you are escaped as a bread out of the snare of the fowler now in the name of Jesus. So any strategizing away from you, any strategizing, you're not even aware of people far or near that is supposed to be walking against you begins to walk for you now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 If somebody, if they have been deciding to move you up, but somebody has been wearing their head around where you walk to set up in a position to say, well, it's coming suddenly. Like, well, let's give him our time. You know, this thing is not, uh, you know, trying to assume that you should not get to a new level. That's a lie of the devil. God says you're equipped, you're ready now. So every strategy, every plan of the enemy against you now on that job is scattered to pieces. Any voice that rises up against you is silenced now in the name of Jesus. This is your time to go forward. In Jesus' name. You will testify. You will testify by fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's, let's bless the Lord with our offerings. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's our offering time. Amen. Our blessing time. We thank the Lord for this great word that we have received. Amen. We have tools to strategize. Amen. According to the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to read briefly this uh, afternoon from Malachi chapter 3, and I'm going to start reading from verse 8. It says, Will a man rob God, yet he have robbed me? But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. 
Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. So this today, according to the word of God, we want to bring in our tithes, our offerings into the storehouse of God. Amen. I want us to know that we are sowing into fertile ground in the mighty name of Jesus. All that the Lord is for us in this house, I want you to know God is not a debtor to any man. As you sow, as we sow our seeds today, we will reap great harvest in the name of Jesus. We don't want to be robbers, amen? But we want to sow our seeds and our tithes and offering into the house of God. And the Lord will replenish us greatly in the name of Jesus. This is part of our strategy, sowing into the, hand, into the kingdom of God, amen? Because there will be great harvest. Hallelujah. If you are writing out a check, uh, we have all the information on the screen, the ways to give. Uh, if you want to write out a check, you write, we were writing out a check to IM Ministries, a Glory International Christian Center. You can give through Cash App, through Zelle, or you could give through the website as seen on the, uh, up on the screen right now. There are different ways to give. Hallelujah. Whichever way you choose, the Lord is honoring you. Hallelujah. If you're giving through our website, you will see we have different, uh, we have a listing for the tithes, our offerings, seed faith, our building fund, our missions, our outreaches, amen. God is doing great things through IM Ministries all across nations. So we encourage each and every one of us to be a part of this, amen. Hallelujah. And as we sow, as I said, the Lord, bountiful harvest is our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. If we are done uh, right putting our offerings together, let us rise up to our feet as we bless this offering. Heavenly Father, we just want to give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. We thank you, everlasting God. This great opportunity, O God, to come and sow into your kingdom, mighty God. We thank you. We bring our tithes and our offerings, O God, into your storehouse, O God, that there will be meat, O God, in our storehouse, there will not even be room enough, O oh God, for the harvest, O oh God, that is coming forth in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father Lord, for every hand that's blessed, O oh God. And even those that might say, oh, I would have loved to give, O oh God, and don't have. Father Lord, we thank you because, Lord, you are the way maker, O oh God. You are the great provider. Thank you, Father Lord, for great provision for each and every one in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father Lord, for this harvest, mighty God. We thank you, Lord God, that we know we are sowing into fertile ground, mighty God. Thank you, Father Lord, for bountiful harvest, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive our offering, Majesty, as a sweet-smelling savor offering in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Let your name alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallowed be your awesome name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's just lift this offering and give him a wave offering, for he alone is worthy. Blessed be your awesome name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the lord and we offer unto thee the sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer unto thee the sacrifices of praise do you bring the sacrifice of praise into the house Sacrifices of thanksgiving as we offer unto thee the sacrifices of praise. Amen. Praise. 
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And those of us on Facebook and, and uh, YouTube and MixLR, the audio system, we thank you for being part of this. Uh, um, he that began the good work in us will complete it. As much as we, I, there's something I want us to show us uh, from the, the things that uh, we are working on in in, in the, uh, Pakistan, one of the places, Bay Channel. I want to show us the what we believe God for now, so you guys can be part of it. All right? We believe God for um, there's a um, a plot now. So it's, it's going to show it on the screen, so you guys see the plot of land that we believe God for. Um, um, there, and that's part of the work that God is doing, and so you guys know. So they're going to show it the spans, and we trust God to be able to do something to get it. I'll tell you what it, what the the cost of just the plot is and all that. So we will get that. Um, okay, um, we'll get that, and you guys can can see it and uh, and know what uh, God will may have, have you to do towards that. Every seed you saw here is in the fertile ground. You know how much we send monthly down there for the church, for the things to run. Like I said, we just got equipment, and there's somebody planted the seed for the whole equipment for one of the centers, you know. Yeah, so that was like, took us about 1,540 something, and uh, dollars, all right, for the equipment. And, uh, so, we'll continue. so that's the whole span of, can you see that? Can you play it again? Amen. Praise God. See that? So you're seeing Pakistan with me. See that? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. So that's it. And um, okay. So we're told that um, the, the initially the guys that said the that's just for the land because we need some I think there'll be something for legal fees and all that. But that's just this supposed to be like six grand, so six thousand dollars. And uh, but um, I told them like Pastor Luis does, uh, we don't take it first time. What you tell us, we go back and say there must be more to be done. So and they uh, this uh, they finally arrived at fifty five hundred, all right, for just the plot. And, uh, so we it's a big span of you see how uh, the big span of land. So we. It's favor actually that it will come. <laughs> so it's not something they said this more than twice more than times the real value in the real market thing. You know? so, like I said, the Pakistan is not something we sat down and drew a board, like you know, budgeting on the beginning of the year we're going to Pakistan. We didn't plan it that way. The way it came there. <laughs> but, 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 but I just sent me a test this morning when I was there. Say, say remember the things that used to be speaking. About the international of the ministry, say, 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 keep speaking. You're seeing the manifestation without even, it makes it sound effortless, you know, but with what God is doing, praise God. And so he's arranging the people that we them plan it and the people that we can work with on his own. And uh, you see all of them in the services all the time. <laughs> amen. All the, amen. You see all of them there. Uh, praise God. Sister Termina was there. She's there. She just went off camera. Um, Sister Violet and Brother Emmanuel are there. That's the other one in main channel. Sister Simon is in main channel too. They're all there. Praise God. And Sister Termina and Shesa, they're the ones in uh, Kanewa. All right. Amen. And um, the whole lot of others. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Um, praise God. Praise God. So we, we see, um, so all this, so every one of us this is part of our deal all right be involved in it you know what god can have you somebody planted a seed for the equipment last i just mentioned our left i told the people that said we believe god <laughs> that's what work it's not like okay let's see what man or anybody can do we believe god and we just left it like that and we just trust god and somebody dropped in the offering the thing for the equipment so and we did it we got it if i tell you the way we even went around it the way they Think it just came back to that amount. The mixer, wireless mixer, um, speakers, the wired microphones for the choir, different things are all in it. Praise God. There are many more things. But we keep preaching. We keep people are coming with signs, wonders, and miracles happening, testimonies in the lives of people, deliverances, healings, and all that. 
and the word coming, changing people's lives. Um, that's what God is doing. So when there was no, the small equipment we had, we were still preaching. It didn't stop us. Yeah. Different things will come in. Keyboard, microphone, and all of them. Praise God. So every one of us, whatever God can put in your heart to do, let us know. Every seed that is going there with the equipment, see how the people rejoice and are happy about it. They are talking about it's ministering to them. The fact that things that happen, you can imagine who planted that seed. <laughs> the kind of prayer that is going for that person. Yeah. yeah. The prayer is going heavily. All over the day, they are like blessing God every day for it. It inspired them. The ones in the other branch of the church, the second branch saw it. Say, wow, this is what they, they were calling up each other, congratulating each other that this is what <laughs> this is good, yeah, beautiful, <laughs> and they're rejoicing seriously. And it's blessing, it's blessing everyone. So, where, whoever planted us, you can imagine people are praying for you, praise God. So, don't forget, glory to God. We praise you, my God. I knew that note was coming, and that's what we were writing. I know, I don't know what note it is, but uh. <laughs> But I do praise God. Okay, praise God. You see, my Pastor Joyce doesn't just speak anything. She's not in the house. She's connecting by Zoom. So she just called uh, one of the pastors, Pastor Nama, on the phone and told her what she's sowing towards this. She said, don't leave it till later. People should sow their seed now. She so tell them now so they don't miss the timing. I don't, see, me, Abama, you see, let me give you an example. I was coming this morning. The Lord said, remember, because, oh, there are so many things. Just wait. This is a family. You know, Sister Omar, our dear sister, she just, uh, my baby, well, sister, baby, sister to all of you is my baby. I bet it's a miracle, but you know that. This prophetic thing, God spoke while she was still in the womb. You know, and all that with her mom, and God sparing and saving her mom and saving her life. You know, so I know her, all the things she's been here. She just graduated beautifully. I mean, top honors. It's not just anything. Nobody associates with us and gets low on. No, 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 no. To God be the glory. I understand. So, but Pastor Josh was all over the place about her this morning. Oh, man. Oh, what can I do for my. So, I, I mean, when they came to pick me, she said, Oh, man, I have to do something for my. I said, Oh, And anytime she's like that, there is an unction. When I came to the office, I said, yeah, I said, I said, there's something great again coming for this girl. I remember one time, one guy who studied accounting in Nigeria. He came, we, started, we just started the fellowship in the house then. So he came. And uh, after this, I just called him and said, people come in and do probably many jobs, but you are going to get your first job in this country will be according to your profession. Within two weeks, the guy called and said he got a job as an accountant. <laughs> so I know when I get some of those, it's a, uh, the, the, the unction of the prophetic is, is in, in the house, in this ministry, right? Praise God. So we know that when we say God speaks and all that, and when God speaks. So she said, said, said raise the seed now. I say, she's, I don't have to say what she's saying, but I have to say to help you understand that she means it. She's herself is planting a seed of $1,000 towards it. All right? Amen. Praise God. So everyone, right now, we're not going to leave it later for that plot of land. You see, thank God. God always helps me because he might speak like we, because I told them, I said, by next week. The man actually said, he said, you could do, he said, do it now, even if it means favor that we can do the payment one month and two months and lay it out another. But the Lord said, I told them, I told them, I said, within one week, you're going to get something come towards this direction. As I told her, she, she will know, it's in her test. Then we talk, come kill them. <laughs> so, so that is what it was. So everybody, whatever God will put in your heart to bring to us this now. So we already have a thousand dollars towards the six thousand, five fifty-five hundred. Praise God. I would say six thousand because we have to do the logo thing now, yeah, and some other things around it. So, everybody, so do what God will have you to do. I'm going to do mine. Well, well when I announce anybody, so I'm, not, I'm not going to announce my own. So everybody do what God put in your heart to do. We just announced what she's doing because she sent this word. Say, people should do it now. So, so I announced that she just gave $1,000. We don't do that normally. All right? I remember when we were doing something about, um, I was something raised of somebody who is not even here. Was in, I think she was in Buffalo then. Said she's planning so and so. Said, don't mention that. Of course, we don't mention that. We don't do it here. We don't do that. Praise God. Like the person who gave the seed for the equipment. Did you hear me mention her name? I didn't mention her name. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Glory. So do that. Amen. So we have. Uh, amen. So do that. And everybody, 
wherever you are in your home and you're going to be part of this, if you have written it, you get a point to rise up with it so I can pray over it. Amen. Wonderful Jesus. Don't be afraid to give. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me write my own on the back of this, on the back of our own, yes, our own. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. You know, when we first started the ministry, we're not, we're not taking offerings. Can you imagine? <laughs> when we first started. So my wife and I, we took our own tithe. That's how we used to incorporate the ministry, do everything, started everything, bought the church. We were using the first place. All things we did. Just both of us. Amen. Praise God. If you have written something, I have her own and my own here. So rise on your feet if you're here. And those, wherever you are, point your own what you want to do. Point it, lift it up before God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's not, you see, it's some of you are on Zoom, so it's not anybody pushing you to do anything. We don't do that. But this is just at the instant. I've had many cases. I can give you testimonies. When we, the first equipment we bought, you remember, we already went to buy it. And we paid The ministry account, when we finished, we came by the Lord said, raise the offering. I said, God, we paid. He said, raise the offering. Now, watch to see it's God. I announced it, and we raised the offering. By the time we finished, when they counted, it was the exact money we spent for the equipment. I know when it's God. <laughs> I used to count less as well. I don't do any. How many of you have heard all the things we're doing in Pakistan? We could be showing all the things, all the, our Facebook, everything, to make people give money. We have not. It's only recently. We started putting it on our Facebook. We even told them to put on their own Facebook, and they didn't even, they were waiting for us to say, give that thing. We have not. We didn't do it. So we're not doing it because we're looking for people to bring, uh, show one picture so people can give to us. No. Our goal is to bless the people there. Every day I hear the testimonies of God's increase. They ask me to go to people's homes. And when I say go, on Zoom, yeah, go to people's homes and pray and all that, it blesses my heart. You know, and the people rejoice and things are going. We're teaching the counsel of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So let's, let's pray. Amen. Everyone, if you're involved, lift it up, whatever you're doing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the voice of God. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. I've never done this kind of thing before. But you, you don't say you're too small. Or you don't, even if it's a small amount, pick up the paper and write something to us. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God, <clears throat> God, you are so good. Can't kind of sound that right from my heart to this time. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so good to me. Sing it with a meaning. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so So good, you are so good, God. You are so good. Hallelujah, God. You are so good. God, you are so good. You are so So good, 
Just put in my say, tell my people that I love them so much. God loves us so much. So much. So you're wonderful people, I know that. <laughs> every one of us. So good, so precious. I feel like hugging every one of you. <laughs> Amen. On Zoom <laughs> and life and everywhere. Praise God. We thank God for this. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your glory. Thank you for this vision, the things you're doing in Pakistan and all over the place and everywhere else. Thank you for you that began this good work, you complete it. Thank you for everything that is necessary for us to actualize this. Let it be released unto this people. Everyone who is pledged, you know, who is giving to us, not even the pledge, giving to us this now. Thank you for providing even more, your harvest, that they can do more. You are able to make all grace abound towards us, in that we have in all sufficiency in all things, abound unto every good work. We thank you for it, mighty God. Thank you for it, mighty God. We praise you. We praise you. Thank you, mighty God, for everyone's finances. Their finances are divinely protected. God, the devourer, cannot touch anyone's finances. We we'll give you praise, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The Lord is good all the time. All the time. You see, when I spoke the word that, so the time I said one week. Before I thought God would do for the equipment, I didn't give him time for it. I said one week. In one week's time, we're going to respond to that issue. I was, if I was thinking in my Thinking, let's walk it out. It has to be one week after today. It says already one week before the next Sunday. I would have arranged to do this. See, this came from the note that I said, do it now. So it wasn't my thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? But God is honoring the statement of faith. This is what we're saying. When things come, you hold well done to work on when, when is God you're waiting on? You don't walk it out. He walks it out. We give you praise, mighty God. So the celebration I was celebrating on the inside of me all morning. It's for somebody's breakthrough here. Somebody hearing me? Our breakthrough. See? Oh, wonderful. Mm. Mm. Sources you have never thought of. You will see. You will hear. You will come. Santa Poco. Somebody will hear some phone call today that will lift you up so much that something has happened. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's do that. Those of you on Zoom, kind of, you know how you are going to do with whatever you're giving on the thing that is written, the ways to give. Send it that way. If you're writing a check, you know the address is there, whatever you're doing. Or you can let us know if it is something you say, I'm going to do later. Write the, e the test or email to the people, or if you have mine to send it to me, it's okay. Send, I, mean, I didn't say send the money to me, I mean send the test or email. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> send it to the ministry. If you send it to me, they're telling me it's me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So you guys are blessed, all right? Amen. So the ways to give on the screen, and you have it in your email. They've sent it to you before. If there's anything, email the ministry. Test the people who will call the people. You have the numbers there, and any other person you have the number. I'll get that going. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is good all the time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those of us on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Miss LR, we, we thank you for being part of it. There are so many other avenues that are going to come soon now. Our goodness, many things that we're going to be broadcasting also, and all that. On Fridays, we answer questions where some of that platform might be brought into another system, also where we have places where we can ask, answer questions, or bring some discussions and some things briefly after a message. We're trying to, trying to think of some things that God is putting in my spirit. Uh, amen. So, I want to be able to reach as many as possible, people as possible. Tell people, send them to the Facebook so they can go to the messages and all that. Amen. 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 Uh, we love you. Those on Facebook, YouTube, uh, 
That means uh, your children are blessed. God said us to, told us to be doing that. Your children are blessed. They are covered by the blood of Jesus, spirit of excellence, wisdom, and divine favor rest upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we look forward to seeing you during the week. We have uh, Tuesday, we have a, a service ministration in Menchano of uh, Pakistan. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I don't understand this. Okay, okay. okay. So we... We um, so we have a Tuesday administration 9 a.m. our time, 6 p.m. Pakistan time in main channel branch of the, of the church, amen. And that's where Sister Violet, Sister Simon, Brother Emmanuel are, amen. Praise God. And on Wednesday we have a service here at 7 p.m., uh, which is 4 a.m. Pakistan time. That's quite the next day. And Thursday we have a morning uh, carnival branch of the Pakistan churches of the church. Um, 9 a.m. Um, and 6 p.m. at the Pakistan time. Keep praying. We know what God is doing. We're hearing testimonies. People are coming in. And of course, we kind of sometimes you see that sometimes it surprises people the kind of things that God is doing. So they tend to wonder, like, wow, well, you know, there's some people who don't bother playing with the fool of God. But what God is doing is bigger than what anything else is doing. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. So we so we have our main channel uh, branch Tuesday morning and Thursday morning carnival branch of the church. Amen. Praise God. Amen. On Friday morning, Friday morning, we have a training. We are training the workers, church workers, the, into the work, prayer group, choir, um, visiting, cleaning, all the groups that you have in church ushering. Everyone were training them on Friday morning. Um, it's like actually mini Bible school. If you'll be there, keep better attend. If you're not there, it's not just that. People here, everybody's getting blessed by it. So uh, earlier when we started the ministry here, we had a school of ministry, you know, which is um, um, what we're bringing. Okay, praise God has given us the privilege to have taught some time in the Bible school of the church we grew up in. And uh, we thank God for that. So we're studying that here so we can we get blessed. Praise God. Um, so Sunday, so Friday morning, the Pakistan uh, main channel and Kanewa churches combine the workers. Um, I mean, the satellite from different parts, but, <laughs> but everybody is involved in it. So we teach and ask questions and all that. And uh, so Friday morning, 9 30 a.m. here, 6 30 p.m. that time. Friday evening, we have our interactive prayer service, 7 p.m. here. Um, it's 4 a.m. Pakistan time. Uh, 7 p.m. is 11 p.m. in Nigerian time. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So we are, um, not 12, not 11, 5 and so. so we are all 12 midnight. So we all should be part of this. On Fridays, bring your questions and all that discussions so we can answer, we talk about things, various issues that come. And we're discussing on the Holy Spirit. And, and any other thing you want to have questions on, you can ask in relation to the Bible. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. So those of you on Facebook, YouTube, Sunday morning we have our service. Um, come. Um, God will bring something great for us. Here we, are. we just look to God for his insight as to what he has for us. We look to God for freshness every day in every service. Directly connecting with him. We bring the body, the heartbeat of the Lord for the moment for everyone here. And it's for everyone here. That's why you know it's from the Lord. That's how we can get a message. I can preach the same one thing on Tuesday, Sunday here. Say, preach the same thing on Tuesday. And I say it will be entirely different because the people receiving are different. Amen. Praise God. So we love you so much. Thank you. We'll see you again. Amen. You're blessed.